If you're like me, it's likely at some point you've had this abhorrent excuse for a haircut. As you've grown older, maybe you've adopted this look at some point and eventually settled on just looking like this. Although you may think you're extremely edgy, trendy and different, you're not. Let me explain. Despite how different many of these styles look, they've all been a result of the emo subculture, which has been intrinsically linked to emo music developing alongside the genre. So how come so many styles of clothing worn by narcissists come from what are essentially different styles of the same genre of music? And most importantly, why on earth would anyone willingly want to look like this? Well, in order to find all this out, we need to explore the origins of the genre musically and how the fashion linked to that at the time. The term emo, originally emo core or emotional hardcore, came out of the DC hardcore scene in the early 80s with the band Rites of Spring. Rites of Spring would take the hardcore punk formula and down badify it by slowing that down and focus on more emotional lyrics that oftentimes delve into some pretty personal stuff. Due to the more, I guess, emotionally charged version of hardcore Rites of Spring were producing, they were forcibly slapped the label emotional hardcore, then emo core, then just emo. And despite the fact the band absolutely hated the description, I guess they technically were the first emos, so let's get into what these boys draped over their sweaty bodies. Well, it's DC Hardcore, so essentially just plain t-shirts and jeans, occasionally with some designs. Many individuals within the scene saw the punk style of before as a gimmick, so in some strange way dressing just completely normal became a form of rebellion. Despite this being the origins of emo, and part of the aesthetic, it probably isn't what you picture when you think of emo fashion or just emos in general. If that's the case, you definitely don't think of this when you picture emo. Well, that's kind of the direction we're headed. We have a little bit before we get to. Rites of Spring would inspire a few contemporaries within the punk scene, such as Embrace and Husker Du. These bands alongside this dude would begin to see some popularity which led to individuals within certain areas completely devoid of any established music scene becoming inspired to make music. That's right, I'm talking about Midwest Emo. Bands such as Cap'n Jazz, Sunny Day Real Estate and Mineral were introducing more Indian math rock elements into this more emotional side of hardcore punk music essentially stripping the genre of any of its remaining testosterone and replacing it with finger calluses. The emos of the Midwest took the fashion of individuals within the hardcore punk scene and essentially made it equally as boring, but at least three times as ugly. Instead of just wearing a t-shirt, jeans and boots, they decided to be as unfashionable as humanly possible. Imagine if the kid with a Minecraft t-shirt and cargo shorts was a touring musician. That essentially encompasses what emo style would become as the genre transitioned into Midwest emo. Musicians often wore either chinos, jeans or cargo shorts for comfort, alongside a graphic band t-shirt. That avoids the most important thing however, flannel shirts. Yeah that's right, many individuals within the scene look like this, although they were mostly skinny as opposed to being built like a whiskey barrel. Due to the Midwest emo revival in the early 2010s, the fashion of the subculture has kind of swayed into hipster territory, which basically encompasses the same thing, just slap an obnoxiously bright beanie on that receding hairline and you're good. As the 90s came to a close, the public's perception of emo shifted drastically. Within a matter of years, an emo went from a socially awkward individual dressing normally to fit into public scenarios, to a socially awkward individual dressing as obnoxious as possible to stand out as much as they can. So how did this happen? How come the public's perception of emo fashion shifted so far from what the individuals within the original scenes were wearing? Well, it all started with the popular bands within the underground scene receiving attention from labels. Specifically, the band Jimmy Eat World would receive major mainstream attention thanks to the song The Middle, laying the groundworks for what is essentially pop punk but is labelled as emo for some reason. Suddenly quote unquote emo was everywhere. Record labels had found an apolitical, catchy and accessible genre that appeals to the young people. They weren't going to let that go, resulting in many pop punk or emo bands becoming extremely popular. What also made the genre appealing to the labels was the unique aesthetic attached to the genre. You know, long black greasy fringe, thick rimmed glasses, filthy secondhand clothes. So how did this style suddenly develop if the emos of beforehand just looked like this? In order to find that out we have to go back a few years, back to the mid 90s, to the San Diego screamo scene. Bands such as <laughs> and Nanny Tokaro would focus on creating a more chaotic and expressive offshoot of emo that involved a lot of screaming. Many participants within the scene combined the clean cut more normcore style of previous emos with straight black fringes. Swing Kids vocalist Justin Pearson would actually rock this absolutely diabolical excuse for a haircut which is seen as a precursor to this somehow more heinous trim. Refused would continue to develop the style, utilising the same haircut alongside all black clothing and painted nails, more akin to what the emo style would become in the coming years. Around the same time, 90s metalcore band 18 Visions expanded upon what would eventually become emo fashion, directly going against the more masculine style of dress seen in the hardcore scene. 18 Visions would be inspired by bands like <laughs> and Unbroken, deciding on a more effeminate style of clothing. Skinny jeans, black clothes, eyeliner, this trim, you name it, all the emo staples. This led to the term fashioncore being used to describe this style 
style of clothing and gaining popularity because of course something needs a stupid, meaningless name before it can be enjoyed by anyone. The influence of 18 Visions would result in hair in the scene becoming more, let's say, experimental. By this I mean any item apart from professional haircut equipment was used to cut the hair, resulting in asymmetrical layered fringes. As this style became more popular, more individuals who weren't actually fans of the music or scene began dressing in a similar way. This is when the term scene queen first saw its use as a way to describe essentially posers or people who only dress in the style to appear a certain way. Although it was originally used as a derogatory term, scene would actually develop into a completely different subgenre of emo fashion. As the popularity of bands such as My Chemical Romance and Good Charlotte began to skyrocket, their influence on the fashion of the scene became more apparent. Many of these bands were also inspired by more goth and death rock fashion from the likes of Misfits, The Cure and Susie and the Banshees, focusing heavier on just wearing as much black as humanly possible. Might as well shove a bit of black around the eyes, nails, toes, everything black. Emo fashion would reach its peak in the mid to late 2000s and would incorporate a combination of all the distinct styles discussed earlier, apart from this one obviously. The style included skinny jeans, vans, studded belts, as many wristbands as you could fit on your wrist, black makeup, fishnets and most importantly, one of the worst haircuts that ever roamed God's green earth. You may be thinking this is around the time in the video when I state that the scene has died out, but it hasn't really, it's just laid dormant, festering, resulting in a few different modern styles that are directly related to this phase of emo fashion. The first one I'm going to briefly cover is emo rap, which is the combination of emo and rap music, most commonly trap, that reared its head during the mid 2010s. Due to the state of the trap scene at the time, it's obvious there was only one direction for this facet of emo fashion, take it to the most ridiculous lengths possible. This resulted in a bum rush of artists trying their best to outdo each other, with face tattoos and colourful hair being utilised alongside more typical emo staples such as studs and painted nails. Although one thing isn't really present in this style, the use of black, it seems the flashiness of the artists in the scene outdid the need for black, with bright colours often being used instead. Emo fashion follows a story that's pretty much identical to any other form of rebellion, whether it be music or clothing, as certain aspects of emo fashion have become more mainstream, with the likes of for example this dude, the aesthetic has been warped to feature less of the aspects that appeal, less so to the mainstream. Emo fashion is no longer considered overtly dark, and has pretty much ditched any of the moral aspects of the original scene. It's essentially the result of modern musicians and trendsetters being inspired by artists in the emo explosion of being far too trendy to be caught dead in this haircut. I think this image pretty much captures what modern emo fashion has become. Billy Eyebrow here, wearing what I'd only assumed to be a few stitched together curtains, was described as emo. This dress costs thousands of dollars and is actually Gucci. This can also be seen in these images. Celebrities spending thousands of pounds to look very similar to individuals who couldn't even afford to buy their favourite record and had a mental breakdown when their black eyeliner ran out. Emo fashion will never be the same as the mid 2010s, which honestly is probably a good thing because it looked pretty <laughs> terrible. As is the same with goth and punk, aspects of the style are utilised to create outfits that might actually look good for once. Actually scratch that. Forget everything I just said. What is this? Why'd, why'd you wear this? I actually don't understand. <laughs>